No. Alright, we're gonna start. No, it's easier because that I'm transitioning from a chair up to this. We have to do it. I've been doing it all Getting my blessing. Alright, let's so shall we? So we shall. Good morning and welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist. Good morning. Good morning. Let's pray for all our parishioners, and especially for the sick and the old. So let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery by coming to my altar. I confess. Oh, my God. And you, my and my heart and my and my Almighty ever living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people, and bestow your peace on time, on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, we stand to reach and thanks to you in the unity of our spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you my son, go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not yet revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, Lord for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. 
I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry, and he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or offering you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocausts or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me, To do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. We have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who brings us truth and grace. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus was standing with two of his disciples, and he watched Jesus walk by, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Our Gospel reading this week, although it is the second Sunday in ordinary time and was supposed to be transitioning into Mark's Gospel account for this year, but today we hear this gospel passage from St. John. The gospel account follows last week's readings and finishes the scene of Jesus's baptism in the Jordan. And today it takes account, you know, when Jesus is departing from the Jordan, from the area. In the first reading from Samuel, uh, this very moving passage, if you really read it closely, it's about what a servant's mission truly is. You know, about what our vocations in life may be, can be, hopefully will be. And it's not just to rise up and save yourself, you know, to make sure, you know, 
God is looking out for us that we are going to be saved, but to be the light to the entire world. Samuel hears God's voice, but didn't understand it. Didn't understand until he actually listened. And then the Lord was with him. From then on, he spread the word of God, and it said the word of God was with him, and he never said anything that wasn't inspired by God. You know, that happens a lot in life, you know. A very uh, theological uh, conversation is that, you know, God always makes the first move in our lives. You know, people say, well, I was, I, I was born again. I found God. And well, you know, <laughs> God's always been there. You didn't find God. You finally realized God. You finally realized Christ has been calling. You just finally decided to listen. Just as uh, Eli tells young Samuel, you know, no, no, go to bed and listen next time. You know, when you hear God's voice, listen and pay attention to what he says. And there's an old saying in a movie, which always cracks me up, not a very <laughs> Christian-based movie, but still a very funny line. You know, this guy and this gal are sitting in the uh, coffee shop, and she asks him, she says, you know, do you listen to people, or do you just wait to speak? <laughs> and John Travolta responds, eh, probably a little bit of both. <laughs> and it's probably true, you know, do we actually listen to God when we pray? Or do we do all the talking? You know, a lot of times it's best just to sit back, you know, and take a breath and maybe listen. As I said a couple of weeks ago, a lot of people think, oh, that's just your conscious talking to you. But in the end, I mean, really, what's the difference? I mean, your, your subconscious hopefully has been groomed and conditioned by your Christian faith. And so although, you know, we see, you know, Jesus has just been baptized and he's headed out and he's uh, calling his first apostles here in this very first day. And although Jesus was sent, you know, to save the people of Israel, he always has the big picture in focus. You know, although he does minister primarily, you know, to the people he's familiar with, you know, around Galilee and throughout, you know, Judea, um, the apostles are the ones that end up taking the word of Christ to all the nations, to all the people. And this week we begin and we dedicate this week to the prayers for Christian unity. We do this every year. And the theme of this week's prayer is, Abide in my love, you shall bear much fruit. And so again, abiding in Christ's love is what? First of all, it's listening to Christ. Listening to Christ and honoring Christ's word and reaping the rewards and producing the fruit. So Jesus doesn't have to come away, you know, and chop away our dead limbs in order to make us produce more fruit. Let's make sure that we are bearing good fruit. You know, it's been about 500 years since our Catholic faith experienced a great division. But we should always remember that Jesus did come to save all the nations. You know, the whole world, all the people of all the lands. And the theme is, of course, Jesus' love. You know, could always overcome division. Cries out for unity, and that's what we are called to do. Um, to be united in spirit, purpose, and message, and healing through Christ. In the Gospel reading, John the Baptist sees Jesus and says these wonderful words that we echo every Mass. He says, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus did come to take away our sins through his own sacrifice. But Jesus came not only as the Son of God, but as the Lamb of God. Just as John the Baptist says, Behold the sacrificial Lamb. The Lamb that was indeed sacrificed and died for our sins. So we didn't have to. We can remain in a state of grace through the Eucharist, through reconciliation, confession, you know, through sharing love for others, taking care of those in need in a Christian fashion. By the testimony of the Spirit, John is able to see that Jesus is the true Son of God. At his baptism, Jesus' true identity was revealed to those who could see, to those who had eyes, to those who could hear and did listen. So let's make sure that we too listen and see when Jesus is present in our lives. 
through all the people that we encounter, regardless of race, social status, political affiliation, we still love everyone around us. This is the message Jesus brought us. This is why Jesus is the Lamb of God. It's why he came to forgive us of our sins, because we're not able to do it. We're not able to stop our sinful ways. We can curve them a bit, as much as we can, but we still fall back on our bad ways periodically. So I hope this, and next week, you join me in praying that we all remain the light of Christ. To all those we encounter, regardless of people's styles, lifestyles, the constructs in life, their status, as I say, the faith, and hope that our faith may be a living sign of Jesus' sacrifice for all people. Amen. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages. God from God, light from light, to God from to God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. But the Holy Spirit was a born and became man. He died in the Pontius Pilate, covered death and was buried. Again on the third day, according to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and join to the gods of living and the dead. This kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, with the Father, the Father, and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. That Christians everywhere come together to work for peace in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that civic leaders use their influence to end division in the human family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that Christians of every race and color celebrate their oneness in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that Christians of all traditions see in each other the face of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And that all of us at this celebration honor our membership in God's worldwide family. Let us pray to the Lord. 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 Father Almighty, listen to our prayers. We present to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to say something. Uh, I got a uh, donation from somebody to use for the church. Then the people of the tent came and uh, they used parts of that man for uh, the church. So now uh, some of you have donated money for that. If you want to be reversed to you, please <laughs> let us know and then we will if you want to anyway, donate it to for the needs of the church, we will be very happy to keep it and use it wisely for the good of our family. Stop here. Very good. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is ours. <laughs> very good. And the money that you get is the left off. Mm -hmm. If you want money back, that's yes, right. Mm -hmm. the, the or just can say use it for you know for the church or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Thank you all. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, because in your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given the human hands of name to really come for us. The 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have declined to offer for the divine and work of human hands we become for us on spring to them. For we please you the sacrifice we offer you and the unfold of our heart. For we also the least in your world. Let us pray that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give defense. Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent us, our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks for it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the child. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim you dead, Lord, and proclaim us your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Jose our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed of Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed of the apostles and of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coherent to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. By the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, now will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, do not allow sin to serve the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your church. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness may those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The disciples search out Jesus, but not sure what they want from him. How would I answer if Jesus asked me, what are you looking for? Let us go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Happy New Year. But now there's a surplus. Yeah. So, we're just leave it in the bank, and that's great too. Certainly, God is good. <laughs> Indeed. 